Hey guys, Kansas Flamingo Chef here, Bill, as you know. And you know, a great home kitchen is very important to me. And so is a great home bar. I just happen to have built this one myself with the help of my children, and it means a lot to me. For those of you who don't know, and all my friends know, I have a slight whiskey addiction. In fact, I consider myself kind of an aficionado of American whiskeys and bourbons, as well as a lot of scotches and a little bit of everything, especially great rum and cognac. But I want to tell you about a few American whiskeys and bourbons that you should absolutely have in your home bar. Now, keep in mind, there is a difference between an American whiskey and a bourbon, and we'll talk about it here in just a second. But join me for a quick cocktail. You know, bourbon is whiskey. In fact, all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. I know it's confusing and a lot of people just don't get it and that's okay. So these are three Buffalo Trace products in front of me. Buffalo Trace happens to be my favorite distillery in the United States. And at the moment, they're getting very difficult to come by. In fact, Blanton's, which is this beautiful bottle right here, has gotten to the point it's almost impossible to get. People are paying two and three hundred dollars for this stuff, where it ought to retail for about sixty bucks. So these three products are all made by Buffalo Trace. Weller is the original weeded whiskey. What that means is they use wheat rather than rye. Buffalo Trace is a high rye whiskey, which means it uses rye, and it's a bourbon. Both of these are. And Sazerac is a pure rye whiskey. So. This is just straight rye. This is not a bourbon. So what makes a whiskey a bourbon? So the law is pretty simple. It comes down to components. First of all, to be bourbon, it has to be made in the contiguous 48 states. It has to be comprised of only corn, water, malted barley, and it has to be produced in a, a wood container. Now there is one last ingredient and that is yeast. But here's the key. In order to be bourbon, all of those things I just said have to matter, but it has to be at least 51% corn. It has to be made in the United States. It has to be at least 51% corn. It has to be in a virgin, first used wood container. It doesn't have to be a barrel. And it has to have some kind of malted barley water and yeast. That's it. If it has, if it doesn't meet all those characteristics, it's not a bourbon. This is not 51% corn, so it's not a bourbon. It meets all the other criteria, but these two are at least 51, 51% corn. I said 51% bourbon, 51% corn. The difference between these two whiskeys is incredible in flavor, but it's also in one ingredient. This is malted barley. This is malted wheat. There's still 51 or more percent corn. They're still in an original oak container that's charred at the facility, still made in Kentucky. They just happen to have one different ingredient and taste totally different. Blanton's is basically the same mash as Buffalo Trace, just aged differently and only comes from a single barrel. Eagle Rare is another Buffalo Trace product aged in a different process, but again, almost the same whiskey. But I'm telling you, if you can get your hands on this, this is some great bourbon. All right, so let's really get into this. So what makes a whiskey one that you need to have on your bar? So there's a few things. Number one, what are you gonna use it for? The principal differences in cocktails are pretty simple. Whiskey can be consumed neat which means that's it. It's just poured in the glass from the bottle, no ice, nothing added to it at room temperature. That's neat. The next is with a water back. Water back means that it comes neat, but has a glass of water on the side. The next is in a cocktail, which means that something's added to it over ice or spun like in a, a martini. 
And then, of course, you have On the Rocks. On the Rocks is pretty self-explanatory, or in this, over ice. You can also add just a dash of water to lighten the whiskey, but good bourbon should be consumed and enjoyed by itself. Now, there are exceptions. Some bourbons are just too hot, which means that their content of alcohol is high enough that it's a lot more difficult to palate and consume without something added to it. So if you're a real whiskey lover and a real bourbon lover, you need a bottle of Calmette. You can usually find one of these, keyword usually, for around $60. Absolutely incredible bottle of bourbon. Very, uh, very light in color. Very caramel in flavor. And uh, if you're a straight whiskey person, it's heavenly. But it's getting more difficult to find. So if you can find it for 60 bucks or less, I absolutely recommend picking one up. Weller. You know, I remember a time when you could buy a bottle of Weller for about 15 bucks. Well, right now they're around where I live, about 30. Now, I've seen things online saying people are paying over 100 for it. That's incredibly, absolutely stupid. You should be able to buy the Weller 101 for, or 107 for less than that. But the Special Reserve is a tremendous bottle of weeded whiskey to have in your bar. If you can find a bottle of Sazerac rye, and you can get it for under $70, you should absolutely buy one. This should retail for around 35 to 40. Right now they're going for 50 to 60. If you're planning on making a Manhattan or an old fashioned, you need a good rye whiskey behind your bar. So another outstanding rye whiskey is Bullet 95 Rye. Now it's called 95 Rye because it is 95% rye. The biggest difference between rye whiskey and bourbon is the way that you feel the heat when you're drinking it. When you drink rye, you feel it in your cheeks. When you're drinking a bourbon whiskey, you're gonna feel it in your chest. They call it the Kentucky hug. So a rye whiskey is gonna have that bite that a bourbon might have, depending on how much rye is in it. So a high rye bourbon like Buffalo Trace is gonna have more bite in your cheeks. This whiskey, and this one are absolute must-haves in your bar, if you can find them. And I realize right now they're not easy to find. I've been picking up half gallons of Weller recently for around $43, which is absolutely crazy in today's market, but if you can get them, you should. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark is also a weeded whiskey. Maker's Mark is a little different in that it doesn't have quite the same weeded flavor that Weller does. Maker's Mark is a tremendous sipping whiskey. It's outstanding to make a mixed cocktail with, like a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned. But if you want to elevate your game a little bit, step up to Maker's 46. This is the same whiskey. The difference is that they take this whiskey out of the barrel and they put it into a new barrel to finish aging it with, uh, with rose staves. It creates this subtlety that you just don't get in the original Maker's Mark. Another one that I highly recommend is Jefferson's Reserve. These are all good bottles you can have on your bar for, an, for a reasonable amount of money. A bottle of Maker's Mark is going to run you around $25 to $30. A bottle of 46 will run around $40. A bottle of Jefferson Reserve, and again, these are the prices where I live, guys. I realize your prices might be different. Bottle of Jefferson Reserve, I can usually pick up for around 40 to 45. Um, sometimes they're a little lower when they're on sale. Next, Wild Turkey Long Branch. If you guys like Matthew McConaughey, you're gonna love his whiskey. I'm not a huge Long Turkey, or uh, try that again. Not a huge Wild Turkey fan, but I do love Long Branch. Long Branch has caramel notes and a tobacco flavor that is just unmatched. And it still has that sweetness that you get from the, uh, the wild turkey family. Another one that everybody should have is 1792. If you notice, the 1792, the Jefferson's Calmet, 
and the long branch all have a similar look to the bottle, and that's intentional. 1792 is a little sweeter. You get some cinnamon notes. Um, it, it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not my favorite bourbon on the planet, but I do like it, and I will drink it. Let's move this one out of here over with the Sazerac because that's a rye. But I want to give you an idea what bourbons I really recommend you have. The last one I'm going to put in my list, actually two more, Angel's Envy. For a long time, it was really hard to find this. All of a sudden, it's showing back up on the shelves where I live for around 50 to 70, just depending on who's retailing it. I think this is one of the best values in the bourbon market that's out there right now. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's so, I hate the word smooth, hate it. Smooth should never be used when you're talking about bourbon. bourbon. But a lot of people reference that word when they think of bourbon. So if you want to use the word smooth, this is one of the smoothest drinking bourbons you'll find. As I said before, you, if you can find a bottle of Eagle Rare, please get it. If you can find two, call me. And uh, then one more that you might actually add to your list is Willet. This genie in the bottle look is a pot still bourbon that is out of this world. And it's kind of a neat bottle to have on your bar. Okay, so those are the ones everybody should have if you want a great bourbon collection. But what if you want to step outside the box? What if you want something that nobody else has? Well, then I really recommend that you start looking at single barrel bourbon. So the original single barrel bourbon was Blanton's. And what that means is they would actually take a single barrel and bottle it into bottles, not blend it, not add water, just pour it into bottles and sell it. And that's what a single barrel, single barrel is. There's a lot of good single barrels on the market now. It just comes down to the flavor notes that you want. I think for the money, my two favorites, other than Blanton's, have to be Four Roses and Redemption. They're both outstanding single barrel bourbons. Four Roses is a little sweeter. It actually has kind of a sugary finish where you're not gonna get that with the Redemption. You're gonna get a more full tobacco and uh, whiskey finish that you just don't get in the others. That also, one other that I rarely talk about because I'm not a fan of their distillery but one of the best single barrels on the market right now is Jack Daniels Single Barrel. Can't believe I'm saying it out loud, but this stuff is so good. And it goes for about 55 to 60. So when you consider that it's hard to find one of these, one of these isn't a bad choice. I wanted to give you just kind of a rundown of what the bourbons are that I'm a fan of and why. If you want something really crazy, can always try some chicken cock. But what I really want to do in a couple of segments of doing this is show you how to make some bourbon cocktails and some set and some rye cocktails that even for people who say they don't like whiskey can make you like whiskey. I hope you'll enjoy this journey with me. I know it's a little different from the other stuff that's on my channel and I probably was a little long winded and for that I apologize. But if you hadn't guessed, I love whiskey especially bourbon. There's one more I want to give a special shout out to, and that's one most of you've probably never seen, Blade and Bow. Look it up online, comment on the video about Blade and Bow. I'd love to see what your thoughts are. And if you've had it, which I have, let me know what you think. If you have a favorite, whether it be in this list or not, and you'd like me to give you my thoughts on it, or you'd like to tell me about one you think I've never had, as long as you don't tell me something about that, we can talk, okay? So let me know what you think. As always, I want you to eat fabulous. I want you to live fabulous. I want you to drink fabulous. I'll see you soon.